today of New Haven's Career Development Center online resume tutorial. To begin writing your resume, we need to start by looking at this 30,000 foot view. A resume is not a business form. It is a marketing document designed to sell you strategically to an employer. Your resume is for a very specific audience, an employer in your intended field. Your resume must speak to them, showing them what you offer for their needs. Your resume needs to focus on five specific things. Skills, experiences, traits, the value you bring, and outcomes from your work. These five aspects are what employers want to know from you. So your resume needs to tell your story of what you can do, what you have done, who you are, why you would succeed, and that you can produce results. This needs to be done in a format that is neat, clean, able to survive a quick visual scan and be perfect. This is done by creating these various section headings that organize your resume effectively and make the page look clean and easy to read. You should choose a standard font size and a professional looking font. You do your absolute best to keep it to one page. If it goes over, be sure to really need that additional information. Keep your spacing consistent and line up your headings and content to keep straight linear lines down the page. This means the resume is very easy to read. As in marketing, you are selling a product. You are selling yourself to an employer. You need to understand and target your audience and entice them into wanting to meet with you in an interview. Now let's begin to look at this resume section by section and put the marketing strategy to work. At the top of your resume is your name heading. This is obvious but needs to include your name, address, phone, and email. You can use a dual address setup as we have here or just put one address. Make sure your phone number and email are easy to read here in the center of the page and that make sure your phone voice message and your email account project a professional image. The summary of qualifications is exactly that. Two to three sentences that give an overview of what you are about. Think of this as the table setter. You're going to show an employer in your resume all of this that they read about you in your summary. As a college student, your education section would go first. This is what defines you and is your full-time job, so to speak. You need to include relevant information like the school, the location, the degree you're going for, your graduation date, minors, and concentrations. Make sure your GPA is easy to find, and basically, if it's above a three, put it on there. If it's below a three, you leave it off. Do not use extra or weak language such as anticipated or expected graduation, currently pursuing, or anything like this. This is unnecessary and just takes up room. You can also include other information such as dean's lists, scholarships, and maybe even three to six relevant courses related to your course of study. You do not need to put your high school. If you transferred but didn't receive a previous degree, you can leave that school off. If you have another degree, include that below University of New Haven in the same format you see here. You can also include certificates, study abroad, or other such education here as well. As we pull back again, we see how the top third, the name heading, the summary, and the education section appear on the resume as a whole. Thus far, we've provided a lot of information about our skills, experience, and background, and who we are in very little space at the top third of the resume. Now we get into the real meat of the resume, the experience section. This is probably the most important and least fun part of the resume, describing our experiences. First, list the organization you interned or worked for along with the location, dates of employment, and your title. Don't list the physical address, the supervisor's name, or other contact information. When writing your resume, 